Now, let me totally switch gears here, though, and then say, well, of course, there would be no religion if we were never going to die. And my answer to that question comes from the other area in which I do um, research and from the methodology that I use, which is uh, psychoanalytic theory. And psychoanalysis is a very diverse way of looking at the world. So in a brief period of time, I really can't share a lot, um, except to tell you that what you think it is probably is not what it is, because it is so diverse that um, one uh, person being able to uh, briefly capture its meaning um, would probably look at only 1% of what psychoanalytic theory does. But what I want to say is what it says about what happens to us um, as we live is that to be born into the world uh, is to be born to eventually die. And psychoanalytic theory explains to me what I think is very compelling that we are at some visceral level that we really often aren't familiar with or cognizant of, um, perplexed and bothered, and we really walk in our lives, um, to use a very different expression, not coming out of psychoanalytic theory, um, in the shadow of death. Um, psychoanalysis says that as infants, um, as uh, our first entree into the world, we have a sense of oneness um, with our mothers. And that as we grow, as we mature from three to six to 18 months to three years, we start on a journey of distancing. Uh, some philosophers use the word alienation for this, separation from this oneness. And we are not comfortable with that. And what psychoanalysis tells us as it looks at religion is that religion is a response to this discomfort of a loss of unity with the great unknown, which when we first knew it was defined as the maternal body. And that throughout life we struggle to return to this and we express great anger uh, when we confront the brokenness of human existence, our failures, loss, that uh, in fact the woman that I've studied most, Julia Kristeva, calls our lives an exercise in death work, that we work out the meaning of our deaths um, throughout our lives. Now, how do we put these two answers together? Well, the way we do it is that I think the most interesting work we do by way of working out the fact that we die from my study of psychoanalysis is unknown to us. That when we have no idea that what we are focused on and driven by is the fact that we are going to die, that is when the most interesting things about death happen. So that I would look for what religion does not explicitly say about death. I would actually look at when religion doesn't seem to be talking about death at all to be a statement about death. I'll just give one example. Um, Mary. Mary is a figure in uh, the Christian religion, um, the mother. She is portrayed often with an infant. And yet if you look at Christian art about Mary, this statement about life is also a statement about human discomfort with death because Mary is not often portrayed as a mother who will die, that, that marks and signs of her mortality, uh, also signs of our discomfort with our separation from our mothers, those signs are absent and we can only look indirectly in our art, in our hymns to Mary, uh, to show that we're not happy with ourselves and that we project that unhappiness into what we could say is a management of the meanings of Mary so that we hide the symbols that she would bring to mind of death from ourselves and create a, a timeless immortal woman that tells us that we will not have to die. And when we do that, 
my own sense is that our discomfort moves elsewhere. And so I study um, when religion moves into areas where there is violence, uh, human violence against other humans, and ask what kind of hiding are we doing of, from ourselves of the fact that we are going to die when we literally do death work, when, when we become, our anger becomes driven into um, actually killing others. So this is a huge area, but what I've tried to capture very briefly is that I think, um, yes, religion is about the management of death, and sometimes it has been the most effective when it has enabled us to become convinced for a moment that we will never die. Um, not because of what it has said about, well, of course you're never going to die because you are going to be reborn into some other existence, but that it has nurtured for us being able to live from day to day in under the illusion that we will never die. And that protective mechanism um, is what I spend a great deal of time studying because I think it's actually quite historically quite dangerous um, that when we put the lid on our anger and, and uh, try to hide our mortality from ourselves, it pops up in, in unpleasant ways and against persons who um, had no idea this was coming. And that becomes very problematic for a history of religion when that happens.